Hey guys, this is Chris, Stratomatic Delaware. We are continuing our Inside Pitch tutorial, Inside Pitch Baseball, brought to us by Inside Sports Games, I believe it is. Ah, uh, misspeaking, I guarantee it. But anyway, uh, this game is created by Chris Davis of Idaho, and it is a fantastic game, and I thought I would do some instructional, so that way, uh, you know, maybe make things clear as mud for anybody who wanted to try to learn how to play this fan daggone-tastic game inside pitch baseball uh, we've done three tutorial videos thus far in the series first was uh, the cards and the dice um, what's on the cards uh, rolling the dice the second in the series was um, resolving at bats from the results in the pitching batting and ballpark park matrices uh, the third one was on fielding, all aspects of fielding, ground balls, fly balls, line outs, errors, and range plays. And this video is going to be primarily about strategy, uh, the strategy roles, and how to do the various things that are involved in that. Um, so let us go ahead, we'll get to, we're going through the rule book, bit by bit here. And um, as soon as you get done with ground outs, line outs, fly outs, the next section is a strategy rolls. These are mi mostly just suggestions, especially for bunting and hit and run. We're going to start there and we're going to go through strategy rolls and whatever else is left in the rule book that we didn't cover for this video. So let's do that. When runner's on base, you run a 1d20 strategy roll. That's a 14. Well, what does that mean? Well, these rolls should be made anytime there's a runner on base, as long as strategy is still considered relevant in the game based on score and inning. Anytime the score differential uh, plus in the game plus the inning is greater than 10, all strategy rolls cease. So say it's a three-run game in the eighth, uh, no strategy rolls. But up until then, for statistical accuracy, whenever there's a runner on base, you're going to make a strategy roll before you make your at-bat roll. So making a strategy roll. Um, let's see. Do de do de do. Well, let's just go down the rules. Um, the roll is compared to the runner's attempt rating, ATT rating, for attempting a steal. Well, when you roll the strategy roll, you can look right across the top. And these are the strategy rolls that are here. For strategy rolls, a steal attempt is the attempt number plus the hold number. So the attempt is five. Uh, the pitcher's rating, Kurt Gibson's a lefty, so it's plus one. So his attempt is six. Um, de -deer. And it is saying that if you roll... This roll is compared to the runner's attempt for in it, for attempting a steal. The rating is adjusted by the pitcher's hold rating, which is his SB rating. If the runner is on second, the attempt is uh, the adjusted attempt of the runner is cut in half for a steal attempt to third. Um, if the runner is on third, it is divided by five round down for a steal at home. Also minus ten on his SB rating. Whatever adjusted ATT rating, attempt rating is if the d20 is less than or equal to the roll, the runner attempts to steal. So 5 plus 1 for a lefty, and it's minus 1 for a righty. It would have to be 6 or lower for Kurt Gibson to attempt to steal. If it's anything higher than that, <clears throat> he is not going to attempt the steal. Okay, uh, ATT ratings of N means the runner can never steal. Like, say, Mario Ramirez of the 84 Padres has an attempt of N. He can never steal, actually never steal, or participate in a hit and run. A base runner with H in their attempt, such as Terry Kennedy, he has an H, can only participate in a hit and run. He cannot attempt to steal a base. All rolls that are within two higher of the adjusted ATT rate are considered hit and run with a runner on first. So Kurt Gibson is five. He's a lefty, so plus one is six. So if we were to roll, say, a seven or an eight with Kurt Gibson, 
then it is a hit and run attempt. Let us see. All higher rolls, 10 and above, could be a sacrifice bunt. Check the chart. If the roll is equal or higher than the number on the chart, based on the hitter's bunt rating, it's a sacrifice attempt. So here is your chart. Uh, bunt, bunting possible. Here is your chart. So if the, let's say the pitcher has, and you would have to go to the pitcher's hitting card, which I will dig that out here momentarily. Should have had that ready. Didn't occur to me to have that ready. Dave Dravecki. This pitcher's hitting card, Dravecki's bunt rating is three. Okay. His bunt rating is three. So we look at this chart up here. Um, his rating is three. If he rolls anywhere from 14 to 19 with a runner on first, zero to one outs, it's going to be a bunt attempt. However, he rolled a 12. Now a pitcher with a bunt rating of four, 12 to 19. Pitcher, pitcher with a bunt rating of five, 10 to 19. A regular player, like say Lance Parrish at the plate, he has a bunt of two. He'd have to roll 16 through 19 for it to be a sacrifice attempt. Well, he rolls a two, he doesn't roll 16 through 19. That is how you get the bunting. So basically you go straight across the top. You've got strategy rolls, 1d20, anytime there is a runner on base. Then you check stealing to see if there's a possibility of stealing a base. Then you check hit and run if it's two over the adjusted attempt rate for stealing. One or two over, it's a, poss it's a hit and run try. If it's anywhere in this range on the same D20 roll, you're ro rolling one time. Let's do it real quick. Let's do it one time. We've rolled for Gibson. His attempt is five. Dravecki adds one, so that's six. So one through six is an attempted stolen base. It's not an attempted stolen base. Seven and eight would be a hit and run. It's not a hit and run. Bunning possible. His bunning is three. He would have to roll a 14 through 19. He rolls a 19. He's laying down a sacrifice bunt. That's how you do the strategy roll. And there's one little thing left over. If somehow you roll a crit, if you roll a 20, there is a pickoff attempt. With, uh, of course, with a runner on base, that's when you're doing the strategy rolls. If you roll a 20, there is a pickoff attempt. We will, let's see, a roll of exactly 20 is considered no strategy, but instead a pickoff attempt by the pitcher. Then roll 1d20 again and compare to the number of ranges on the pitcher's card under balk, pickoff, and pickoff error. Balk, pickoff, and pickoff error. We rolled an 11. If the roll falls in any of these ranges, those events happen. Otherwise, go ahead to the pitch. So it's not a balk, one through three. It's not a pickoff, four. There is no pickoff error. You go to the pitch. So if you roll a 20, you're going to roll a second time for one of these three ranges. And if it doesn't fall in these ranges, then you go ahead on with the pitch. And you go ahead on with the pitch just like that. <clears throat> one, five. It's chaos, two stars. You roll again, and it's six. Fly to right. That is how the strategy roll is done. Now we're going to break off each component of the strategy in detail. Uh, stealing, and it's up here as well. Uh, SB rate is runner's SB plus pitcher's SB plus catcher's arm. So Kirk Gibson, SB is 15. Dave Dravecki against, well, let's say the next batter is a righty. No, that's his hold. Never mind. That's his hold. So he's a 15. His hold against a righty. That's a split. And if Parrish is coming up next, then you would do the minus one. So we're going to say his hold is a minus one. Uh, make sure I'm doing that right, folks. It's not on the base runner. It's on the person at the plate because there is a slash there. 
But either way, it's a 15. We'll say minus one because he is a righty. He's the next batter, so that's 14. And then the catcher's arm is plus one, takes it back to 15. And you roll the D20. If the roll is less than or equal to the adjusted SB number, the runner is safe. So one to 15, Kurt Gibson would be safe. All rolls of 20 are caught stealing no matter what the adjustment goes to. So the adjustment can be astronomical, but if you roll a crit, boom, he's caught stealing no matter what. All rolls of one or two are subject to catcher's error, check on a th uh, catcher's error check on a throw. Roll a, another d20 roll to check against a catcher's error rating. And it's all right here. It gives you the SB rate on the chart. Uh, the rolls, one to two, runner safe, check for catcher throwing error. 3 to 19, um, if roll is equal to or less than the stolen base rate, safe. Higher, runner out. 20, runner thrown out, no matter what. And then we will go on to hit and run. Hit and run, all GDP ratings are minus 2. So that would be a minus 1. Uh, that would be a minus 2, which means there's no chance for grounding into a double play in this combination. Uh, all base running ratings, all BR ratings, get a plus two. So he's now a base run rating of six. We'll say Parrish is going to be batting, Gibson will be on first. All home run and walk ratings for the batter executing the hit and run are halved, rounded down. So homer ratings are now ten and nine. Walk ratings are now five and three because he's swinging. He's not swinging for power, he's swinging for contact, but he is swinging so he's not going to be taking four pitches. All line outs are double plays with the exception of an error on a throwing error. ET question mark, such as Mr. Phone Home right up there on the 5 3. If a batter strikes out, resolve the play like you would a regular steal. So let us do a hit and run. Hit and run, Kirk Gibson on first, Lance Parrish um, is at the plate, Dravecki is catching, or pitching rather. So Parrish is at the plate. Let's roll. And Gibson's stealing is going to be uh, de -de actually five. And against a righty, minus one, so four. It's not a, well, okay, it was a four. But we're going to say he rolled a five instead. So if it was one to four, he would be stealing a base. Two above that, five and six, is a hit and run attempt. So now there is a hit and run attempt. Um, we are going to we are going to roll. All GDP ratings are minus two. All BR ratings are plus two. Homers and walks are rounded down. So let's do this. One, six. On Dravecki's card is going to be a possible strikeout. Ah, so the strikeout rating stays the same. I know the Jack takes two away, so it's 1 to 11. Not a strikeout, goes to Lance Parrish's card. 3 5 is a grounder to first. So that is going to be a 3-1 or a U3 play. Gibson will make it to second on the hit and run. Um, actually, you would go to the runner advancement, which we're going to do runner advancement in a separate video. That warrants a complete separate video in and of itself. Um, but that is how you do a hit and run. Then we go to bunting, which admittedly I've not tried to bunt, so we're going to be learning this together. Okay. So if you roll for Kurt Gibson, and you roll, say he's got a bunting of three, so it's gotta be 18 to 19. I read that wrong earlier, sorry about that. So it's gotta be 18 to 19. Look, Kurt Gibson rolls an 18 um, for his strategy roll. We'll say Lance Parrish is on first. Gibson rolls an 18. Move you guys back over here. Thank you very much. That's two down. Kitty Carlisle. <clears throat> Alrighty. He's rolled in 18. Kirk Gibson is going to attempt a bunt. 
Uh, resolve the pitch using the pitcher's card for a sacrifice punt attempt, the next page. If any kind of K or K plus comes up, resolve it like those plays, but cut the end rating of the batter in half. So if it's a K, if a K comes up against a righty, it would be 1 to 10. That'll make it a 5. If it's a K plus, that would be 20, make it a 10 for the strikeout because he's trying to bunt. Disregard all other outcomes but errors in range plays. Um, the error here, it doesn't say ET or EG in the rule book. It says error checks and range play checks. Those are the only two that you don't disregard. Uh, walk, you disregard. Blank, you disregard. Home run check, you disregard. Wild, you disregard. Everything is disregarded except for Ks, K pluses, range plays, and error checks. Everything else gets disregarded on a sacrifice bun attempt. Uh, range play requires a range check like any other. Failed range check is a single. Successful range check is a sacrifice. Any error check requires you to resolve the sacrifice. Then you need to do the error check on the fielder. Okay. You would roll 1d6 if there was an error. I'm taking... No. Okay. Just for any bunt, and this is in the instructions, and actually it's right here, for the bunt fielder, you're going to roll 1d6 to see who the fielder is. It's going to be 2. The pitcher. Handy. We just happen to have the pitcher. Roll 1d20 for the bunt attempt. That is a 2. Subtract one, let's see, star. Subtract one from the bunt rating if infield is playing in. Uh, so bunt rating is three. So you look here for number three. And then the result, two. It's a good punt. Sacrifice, a successful sacrifice bunt if bunting for hit roll, if bunting for hit, roll a d20. Resolve by adding bunt rate plus BR rate minus fielder's range rate. So if you're bunting for a hit, Kurt Gibson would go bunt rate is 3, base running rate is 7, fielder's fielding rate is 3, so that would be 4. If he's bunting for a hit, he would need to roll a 4. Just rolled a 2, he bunted for a hit. <clears throat> roll less than or equal to the batter. Uh, less than or equal to, batter is safe for a single. Okay. Um, say it's Dravecki, and we've got a bunting rate of 3, so we go ahead and roll an 11. Foul. Fouled off, redo attempt, or do regular at-bat. So you can try to bunt again. It's 0-1, or you can do a regular at-bat at this point. And it tells you uh, lead runner is out. Um, great bunt. Everyone is safe with a single. Uh, bunt too hard, bunted too hard, proceed as you would any GDP attempt, and then pop up double play, so everything is right there for the bunt chart. <coughs> and then there is a squeeze bunt attempt to resolve the pitch using the pitcher's card. If any kind of K or K plus comes up, resolve those plays, but cut the end rating of the batter in half. Disregard all other outcomes except for error checks and range play checks. Exactly the same as sacrifice, so you have nothing different beginning it. And exactly the same for the next uh, instructions. Uh, range check, re RP require a range check like any other. Failed range check is a single. Successful range check uh, is a squeeze. Any error check requires you to resolve the squeeze. Then you need to do the error check on the fielder. Now roll 1d6, uh, giving you the player fielding the ball based on the chart right here. If K, strikeout, runner attempts a steal of home using his SB rating minus 10. He's not making it. He's going to be out, Mr. Lance Parrish. Sorry, you only have an 8. However... Then you do the squeeze, and it says you subtract one from the bunt rating if the infield is playing in. So the squeeze bunt chart is not here. It is in the instruction manual, and it's got different, it's got much lower, 
it's got lower success. If it's a bunt rate zero, you need to roll a one. Uh, if it's a bunt, batter has a bunt rate of one, and it's one to two for a good punt. Bunt, uh, one to four for a two bunter. One to six for a three bunter instead of one twelve. Uh, one to eight for a four bunter, and one to ten for a five bunter. And then, of course, these are increased in proportion down here. The same kinds of results, but the chart in the book will give you the adjusted ranges for what the result is and also explain things over here as well. Um, there are only a couple of other things to go over the, to the bottom of this page right here, so let's just do it. There are such things as rare plays, which we had glossed over earlier when looking at the ballpark cards. Anytime you roll the ballpark symbol and you go to the ballpark card and you roll again and you come up with a blank on the ballpark guard, rare plays. And it's a separate chart and there are two sides. Rare plays, base is empty. And rare plays if there are men on base. Then you roll the two D6s. Two four, you go down the side to two four, and that is your rare play. Boom. Possible injuries, possible rainouts, um, possible all kinds of stuff, possible ejections. So that throws a little bit of chaos into the game as well. And also on the rare plays bases empty chart, at the bottom is the injury chart. If an injury comes up. Uh, you are going to follow the chart, do what it says, and then you will be able to determine if there's an injury and if so, for how long. Based on the player's injury rate, which is located right here and right here, INJ, and also on a 1D6 roll. Alrighty. Um, next down, injuries. Well, we just covered that. Um, pitchers tiring. Pitchers are considered tired once they have reached the number of batters face shown on their cards next to starter or relief. So when they reach, actually when they reach 24, on 24, it says when they reach that number. So I had actually been going the batter after. So when they reach 24, when Dravecki reaches his 24th batter, he is tired. Uh, if he was pitching in relief, when he reaches his 8th batter, he is tired. Uh, when a pitcher becomes tired, all single one in parentheses and all K walk in parentheses become, they have the tired meaning. So that becomes a walk instead of a strikeout chance. And that becomes a single instead of a blank. And then they've got optional for pitcher removal, exhausted pitcher, uh, rounding purposes, it says, when using half ratings, always round down. And then anything else, we have tried to cover other incidents, every type of happening in a game if something comes up that isn't covered hopefully using the base six rating system deployed in the game you can work through a solution guys i got chris has pretty much got everything nailed down with this he really does he's pretty much got everything nailed down <coughs> so that is that um so that is video four we're going to do video five which will cover runner advancement base running and then we will do a sample playthrough, and then I'm going to give a review of the game. So uh, that is it for Chris Stratomatic Delaware, guys. This is video four of the Inside Pitch tutorial. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, give me a like. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Hit the little dinger bell thingy next to the word subscribed. So that way you'll be notified whenever content is uploaded. Uh, share me with your friends. And guys, this is Chris Stratomatic Delaware. Have a great one, guys. Keep on rolling.